this is a tutorial of the Japanese political system. Now, just an overview. Uh, compared to many other countries, it um, has a fairly small state, and by that I mean its uh, welfare system, its uh, expenditures in terms of GDP, is actually smaller than in most entrenched uh, democracies. It's also a unitary state, so national governments actually provide local governments with 70% of revenue through conditional grants. So this places Japan in the same category as France and the United Kingdom. Not a federal system, in other words. Its constitution uh, was, of course, set down uh, after uh, the Second World War. It guarantees individual rights and uh, political rights. It guarantees uh, freedom of religion, speech, assembly, press, equality between the sexes, right to a job, education, and a minimum standard of living. And most significantly, it includes a peace clause. And this, of course, is, is directly a, a reaction to the Second World War, uh, where Japan forever renounced war and threats of military force uh, against other nations. And this then prevents Japan from building a military uh, force that could constitute a threat the way it was during the imperialist uh, era. It's possible to amend this constitution uh, through the approval of, of two thirds of uh, both chambers and, and a popular vote. Looking at the overall system, uh, this can be fairly uh, quickly recognized as a parliamentary system. Uh, you have the people voting in for both cham chambers of the legislature called the Diet. Diet um, and then you have the Diet selecting the executive and the executive guiding the public administration. Uh, so this is very much like uh, the system in the United Kingdom um, in, in many senses. Uh, let's have a look at the electoral system because that's actually quite different. So in 1993, Japan reformed the electoral system to mixed member plurality. So uh, you have a system that's the same electoral system as in, in, in Germany and uh, different political party factions control the, the uh, lists of seats in the party lists. And you also have this reform taking place against the backdrop of how uh, his campaigning was done in the multi-member districts um, before the reform. So um, strategic voting has historically been important to maximize the number of one seats in the diet. So you had to be able to determine uh, which candidate within the, the uh, electoral system that existed before uh, resulted in candidates from the same parties competing with each other to be nominated to run in a particular riding. And that party, this is primarily the Liberal Party because they dominated politics, had to be able to assess successfully and, and be certain that they were right which candidate to uh, run in a riding to be able to win that that writing. That's how it worked before. So the LDP then had to estimate which LDP candidate could win a writing and thus uh, engaged in organizing the vote uh, to hand out nominations to likely winners. And this maximized uh, within and this was a, a rational thing to do within the system that it had that existed, maximized the number of seats won for the Liberal Party. And uh, to be able then to organize the vote, the candidates created the Koenkai, uh, which are candidate support networks designed to bring out the vote and manage campaign funding, uh, which draws upon traditional Oyabun Kobun relations that can be expressed as, as client patron relations. And to, to get a sense of how important these networks are to the candidates, uh, you have examples of Japanese members of parliament. Uh, uh, going out and visiting their writings uh, to to show that they are acknowledging the contributions of, of the constituents and, and the, the, these support networks uh, to the extent that they they historically have done several hundred uh, attended several hundred weddings uh, among uh, there are examples of this uh, in, in the candidates uh, uh, support network in a single year uh, so that tells you how uh, these candidates have to, have been very, very active within these candidates' uh, support networks. So that's the backdrop to 
the reform and of course these the networks created uh, have been uh, were very strongly entrenched so they kept uh, being significant even after the reform moving into the parliament both chambers are elected by by the people unlike uh, the house of lords for instance in great britain and uh, unlike the senate in france bicameral systems uh, then uh, and there the lower house is the house of representatives which was uh, originally for commoners much like the house of commons in uh, the united kingdom it retains like the house of commons in the united kingdom uh, the primacy as as the more important chamber uh, it elects cabinet so um, cabinet is responsible to the house of representatives and it can bring down a uh, cabinet and has a question period so all these uh, systems are quite like what you would see in the united kingdom and the house of councillors is the upper house uh, originally for appointed nobles so again very much like the house of lords in the united kingdom it has to approve all legislation cannot be dissolved by the pm and there is a, a rotation of uh, the uh, members uh, who are renewed every uh, three years. Going on to the executive, of course, the emperor is the head of state. Uh, this is a constitutional monarchy, so the emperor is a symbolic figurehead and has no real uh, political power. Uh, the real, so this is again like the United Kingdom. Uh, the real action happens in cabinet. Uh, the prime minister is the head of cabinet. Here is uh, how this system is unlike the United Kingdom. This executive has proven historically extremely unstable. Uh, so uh, it has seen 17 prime ministers in 24 years. The longest serving prime minister in recent history in Japan was uh, Junichiro Koizumi. Sorry if I'm mangling Japanese. And he served for five years, 2001 to 2006. Uh, compare this to any given uh, administration in the United Kingdom. Uh, Margaret Thatcher served for about a decade. Uh, Tony Blair likewise. Uh, here in Canada, it's not uncommon for, for prime ministers to, to last for uh, more than five years. Uh, many examples of that historically. So here is a real difference between Japanese, Japanese parliamentary democracy and the Westminster system. And also, you have the, the situation that a politician can be a, a hereditary position. So you have four prime ministers in a row between 2004, 6 and 2009, uh, where, uh, who, who were the descendants of former prime ministers. So it's, it's uh, almost a dyna dynastic quality to it. So this means that it's really difficult for cabinet to maintain consistency and continuity in policy making because, of course, uh, the chances of cabinet losing a vote of confidence to uh, the House of, of Representatives is uh, very, very high indeed. So in Japanese uh, politics, the real action is really in the public administration, not so much in cabinet. So let's go over that. Uh, Japan has historically a quite strong civil service, a strong belief in expert authority, highly prestigious to make a career within the civil service. Here we can see some real similarities with uh, the French civil service and the French uh, grande école and so on. Uh, so the uh, top graduates from top universities are recruited into the civil service. University of Tokyo graduates, very com competitive examinations, 50 applicants per, per uh, position and not, has not been historically uh, a strange thing. Uh, lifetime careers, uh, you either enter straight after graduation or not at all. So again, very much like the French uh, Grand École. Uh, with the high cabinet member turnover, uh, noted the, the prime minister uh, turnover rate, for instance, uh, the technical expertise lies with the civil service. 90% of the legislation starts here. And for that reason, bills are vague and details, and, and, and this is so that the details can be filled out by the civil servants. You make a bill, you make it fairly vague, you get it through the Diet, and then the civil service attend to the details of the bill. So it's, it's really a case where you can talk about how the civil servants are the problem solvers of the country's problems, not so much the, in the politicians. And again, like the French system of pontouflage, there is the 
amakudari, which is going from the civil senior civil service to uh, business or politics. And you will find that many of those who later become high-ranking politicians, high-ranking ministers, high-ranking uh, uh, even onto uh, prime minister uh, position, have gone through the senior civil service first. Uh, one really key uh, ministry in the the Japanese government has historically been the Ministry of International Trade and Industry, the MITI. So this is really the the, the has historically been uh, a focal point of power. Uh, it was responsible for domestic economy and, and targeting international environment, uh, included foreign trade, resources management, and so on. And until 19, the 1980s, only those who had been ministers at the meeting. Uh, were eligible to become PMs, prime ministers. Now, this was never a part of the constitution or anything like that. This was an unofficial rule that everybody followed. So it was an entrenched rule that if you want to become a prime minister, you had better had uh, this portfolio in your uh, resume. And uh, that tells you just how strong this department has been. Uh, formed cartels dividing up uh, 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 domestic markets and so on, strongly influential in, in economic policy. Uh, in 2001, this ministry was reformed to the Ministry of Economy, Trade and Industry, the METI. But you will sense that having had such strong influence, uh, traditionally, uh, that influence is just not going to go away overnight, uh, simply because it's, it's reformed in that sense. So even though it's no longer a requirement for prime ministers to have served as, as ministers at the department, uh, inofficially or otherwise, uh, we can't underestimate the historical significance of this ministry. Uh, today, uh, Japan faces uh, how to address two decades of stagnation and deflation. Uh, there is talk of the lost generation and there is the uh, issue of demographics. The population is aging. This is something that's happening in all entrenched democracies, in all rich, uh, uh, all of the wealthiest countries. Uh, but in Japan, it's more pronounced than maybe anywhere else. Uh, other, uh, what's problematic here is that you also have a problem, uh, pro uh, pro uh, situation of discrimination against uh, non-Japanese people. This includes Aboriginals like Ainu. Uh, this includes the the issue of gender roles in Japanese society, where where women uh, have traditionally have had a, a really time, a difficult time getting into careers instead of of being uh, um, stay-at-home uh, wives. Uh, and so on. Uh, so, uh, and also, of course, the, the legacy of World War II, has it been dealt with? What about foreign policy today? Uh, Japan has to deal with the rise of China, the new giant in uh, the region. Uh, so all of these, these uh, things have to be addressed by Japanese government. Uh, what has been the cause of the, the this economic stall for so such a long time? Some people say it's because of neoliberal restructural programs. Other people say that it's because there hasn't been enough liberalization of the markets and, and the productivity of, of the Japanese economy because of the old networks is too low. Um, that d debate is not likely to go away soon. So this has been an overview of the Japanese political system. Key features, it's a constitutional monarchy. Uh, it is very much structured like the United Kingdom in terms of it being a parliamentary uh, system uh, where the, the House of Representatives is the strong uh, body of parliament. Also, really key feature, the unstable cabinet, the constraints of a prime minister that is very likely to uh, lose to a vote of non-confidence after a very short time in office. Um, uh, as mentioned, uh, so many PMs over the past 20 years uh, and the power of the public administration to solve um, uh, problems of social issues in society when the cabinet is, is as unstable as it is. And that uh, is a summary of the Japanese political system. I hope you find it useful.